Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're taking a look at dog aggression. Now, of course, dog aggression is a huge topic, and there's a whole range of things that can cause them to overreact. So what I've done today is I've put together some simple techniques and exercises that you'll find useful regardless of whether your dog is aggressive to bikes, cats, cars, or other dogs. But the main thing that I really want to portray in this video is a concept, and it can be summed up in this famous saying, it's not what you do, but it's the way that you do it. So see if you can get what I mean and enjoy the video. So in this consultation, I'm working with Tane. He's an 18 month old Staffy Cross Mastiff and his owner has asked me to come and assess him around other dogs because when he was about eight months old, something like that, he started becoming a little bit dominant and aggressive. His owner kept him away from other dogs because he didn't want any trouble. And it's just sort of uh, that period of time that he's been away from other dogs has got bigger and bigger. And now he really hasn't been around dogs for a long, long time. So I'm not taking any chances with him. We've got a muzzle on him. We've got him on a harness there. And I'm going to ask his owner to walk out onto the grass and then I'll bring one or more of my dogs over. And I want to show you how I work this sort of situation. So the first thing we need to do is really keep control of the situation. So you can see I've got two of my dogs there on leashes. That's the two boys. They're very good, but the last thing I want is them jogging over to say hello. So I'll keep control of them with a short leash. You could use a long line. Inca there in the foreground, she's not going anywhere. So she's free to wander around. And of course, Tane's on a lead. So you need that control to start with. The next thing to look at is the energy of the dog. So clearly my dogs are very calm and relaxed, which is brilliant. On a scale of one to 10, I'd probably put them at a, down at a two or a three. But Tane here, you can see his energy level is much more what I'd say is a seven or almost an eight. Eight out of 10, his tail is upright. He's stiff and strong and he's pulling towards my dogs. Not really what you're looking for. So when a dog's feeling like this, confident, strong, and almost looking for a bit of trouble and sort of wanting to man up, the best thing to do is give them some time. Just move them away. They're not ready yet. And time's on your side. You'll, as you'll see, Tane will calm down, but you don't want to bring him over to meet the dogs in question when he's in that sort of state. Now, what I'm going to do here is a very simple technique, but it's very powerful. It's something I call stop, start, change direction. You basically put a lead on your dog. You walk them round and round, doing anything except for focusing on the other dog. In other words, I'm going to focus my dogs on the grass to the right and the grass to the left. Come on, guys, let's go and smell the flowers. Tane's owner's doing the same. And you're going to see that just a few minutes of this is going to calm his dog right down. It's actually truly amazing. I'll show you a shot of before and after. But um, his, what he's doing now as well is he's going to get in front of his dog and I'm saying do a calm freeze, something I've, I, I use a lot. You crouch down, put your hand under his collar. And if we have a look at his dog now, you'll actually see, this is just a few minutes later, his dog's energy has gone right down. If you look at that tail, we'll zoom in and have a look. But the body language of this dog is so completely different to the body language and energy of the dog that we saw just before. Here he is just 10 minutes earlier, confident, dominant, tail erect, challenging. You know, he's not, th in this state, you don't want to be taking him over and introducing him to other dogs. It's only going to go pear-shaped. So you want to do a little bit of work with him. And, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, here he is. Tail's in completely the other opposite direction, hanging down. He's relaxed. He's very inquisitive. He's, uh, he's interested. He's calmed right down. Totally different dog. You'll have far, far more success with him in this sort of a state. So now that Tane has calmed down somewhat, I'm going to apply a technique that I call the parallel walk. And it's quite fascinating. I'll just let all of this roll and talk you through it. The parallel walk is exactly as it sounds. It's where you walk parallel to the other dogs. And as you can see, we've started off quite far apart from each other walking parallel, but we're going to move closer and closer together. Now, the idea behind this is it's the exact opposite of a sort of a predatory attack from the front. If you think about it, all animals are used to the sort of predatory locking on and running straight at another animal to attack them. So if you're coming straight at an animal, dog, they can feel very threatened. It's why when you meet a dog on the pathway who's coming towards you, it can be quite threatening. However, dogs, when they walk parallel like this, it's far more like they're part of a pack. If you think of a pack of wolves, they all walk in the same direction. And here, we've moved much, much closer together. And Tane's, you know, he's throwing his head around. He's actually wanting to get towards my dog, Jack. So we just move away apart a little bit there. But he's doing really well. 
And these techniques are really what Tane's owner and I put in place for maybe 10, 20 minutes until Tane had calmed right down and then we were able to put him on a line and uh, he was able to meet my dogs. Now, the purpose of this video is really just to give you a couple of ideas of how you can do that, how to calm a dog down. But I do want to show you a couple of clips of this video where uh, Tane has a line on him. So, so here's just a couple of snippets of that stage and you can see him actually playing with my dogs. So the first stage really is putting a longer line on Tane so we can sort of let him go free but we've still got that sort of control. This is actually a horse lunge line, he's such a big boy. And then the next stage is actually letting my dog go. So I've decided Jack is calm enough, he's just going to run off, I can just tell. He's not going to go over to this dog, he's going to wander off and play which is great. So here I use the long line to keep control of Tane and just gauge what he's like around all the dogs and it just gives you the ability to keep control of the situation if it starts to go pear-shaped. And interestingly enough, it's little Inca, who's generally a very fearful little female dog who goes over and says, I understand you, look at those little tails waggling. So they're communicating, communicating really beautifully there. She runs off though, she's not too sure. And this is when I know we've done it, that Jack comes over. He's the dominant dog here. Tane's just letting him sniff first. So Jack's in charge. Look at Jack's tails right up. Tane's just a little bit more submissive. And I'll let you hear the noise because Tane's going to check Jack out here. He's sort of gaining confidence and it could go pear-shaped here, but I get the feeling it won't. I think he's sort of playing there. I think he's saying you want to play. A little bit. Now he's saying you want to play. And what you witnessed there was two confident male dogs deciding who's in charge, do you want to play? And so, yeah, it's time to drop the long line on the floor and just let them have a good run. I'm very confident that they're going to get on really well. The next stage was to take the long line off him. And then when we were completely confident that he was going to be fine and he'd had a good play, we took the muzzle off and he just had a great old time. Here he is playing around with Inca, who's telling him to go away at this point. And he had a great fun play with uh, Jack as well. You can see here they got on like a house on fire. So there you have it. In my opinion, Tane is a good dog. He's a lovely boy. He's sociable. But he is, he has got the tendency to be a little bit dominant. So you do want to understand how to be the pack leader at home. That'll keep his dominance right down and he'll be far more tolerant around other dogs. And some of the key stages in getting him off leash. First of all, we kept control of him at the very beginning using those leashes and the long line. Secondly, we were constantly reading the energy, the situation. Every situation was different, and if it wasn't right, then we just moved them away. So just walk away, focus on something else, and just remember, there's no rush. Take your time, because time is on your side. So there you go. As you can see, we turned a potentially volatile situation into a really successful day, and we gave Tane some much-deserved freedom and socializing off-leash, and we gave his owner some hope. Back at Tane's home, I also went through with his owner the importance of leadership because this will actually be the foundation on which the relationship is built. Now, let me clarify the key concept I referred to at the start, that it's not what you do, but it's the way that you do it, a concept which flows through all of that training in the video and all that I do. Basically, you've got to keep control of the situation. You've got to stay calm and take your time. That's all for today. See you tomorrow, and until then, have an awesome day.